Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of New Music Finds. So this is where I like to collect together all the new music that I've purchased over the past week and I get it from different places like my local record store but also online retail like Amazon, eBay and more. And for this uh, particular past week I got a bunch of different things. Uh, in this case, seven different new releases and then one catalog album although it was just reissued so kind of a new release there as too. And we'll get into all of that in just a bit but before we do, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also, leave a comment, hit like. All those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this with new music finds and all the great stuff that we are going to be talking about here. So, as we always do, we kick off with new releases, but we're actually going to jump back a week to May 20th because this one in particular I didn't get until a little after. Didn't come to me on release day, came to me, uh, you know, a few days after, give or take, and wasn't able to be included in last week's show. So, Goo Goo Dolls, Grounded with the Goo Goo Dolls. Uh, this one here is a live recording that they did during the pandemic. So uh, a lot of bands were putting on those streaming events and things of that nature, and that's what this is here. Cool thing is, this is the deluxe edition. So uh, you can see it's a 21 track live show, but they've also included a CD for the audio of it. So you get the Blu-ray in this, and then you also get a uh, CD in this, so the Blu-ray and the audio. There you go. Very cool. Uh, glad to get a hold of this. I don't know why it was back ordered at the time, but it was, and I had to wait a little bit. Um, interesting to hear a live show with no audience. So definitely has that live feel. I do think I like those better. I don't care for background noise and people screaming out and that sort of stuff. So I have to say I might, might explore a few more of these uh, sort of live in the studio, if you will, uh, type recordings. All right, now here's one. I don't know exactly the date when it came out. It's a few weeks old, I know. And I uh, couldn't find one locally, so I actually imported this one from the UK. So it took a couple weeks to get to me. Lone Rider. And this one here called Sundown. Um, it's on Escape Records. And uh, the interesting thing is, here's the band members. I'll show you the guys there. So it is a super group, although it was advertised as being a project of Simon Kirk from Bad Company, of course, from Free as well. And so let me just see. So here we go. We've got, of course, Simon Kirk on drums. He doesn't sing, and I'm not sure why, because he would sing at least one song live on later era Bad Company albums. But we've got Steve Overland on vocals, Steve Morris on guitars, keyboards, and uh, the Hammond organ, and Chris Childs on bass. So quite the lineup here. Steve Overland does an amazing job sounding like uh, Paul Rogers of Bad Company. This, this album here, I have to say, if you're looking for some good old-fashioned Bad Company, check this uh, group out here, Lone Rider. It's really good. And then Steve Morris, um, this is, uh, sometimes people get the name uh, Morse and Morris uh, confused and we think we're talking about the guy from Deep Purple. This is not. This is the guy though that is played with, um, let me see his finest photo here. He's uh, the guy on the corner here. Uh, he's the guy that has played with uh, Ian Gillen of Deep Purple, so still a Deep Purple connection, but his solo guitar player for many years. And um, so a lot of cool stuff that's going on great sounding album and so uh, if you order the um, there's a UK version at least and it comes with a card that is signed by them all it's not a lithograph these are actual signatures that are on there you can see the uh, ink indentation and reflections and so forth on it so pretty cool I did not know it was going to come with that that was a nice little bonus didn't cost any extra to get it so if you're ordering a, an import version so to speak see if yours is coming with that as well all right, so those are two past new releases, but now we're gonna move into the ones from this past Friday, May 27th. And it was a big day, big day. You can see the shirt I'm wearing here, Def Leppard Diamond Star Halos. I mean, I'm still smiling from this thing. I'm loving it. I know there's a lot of you guys out there, hardcore Def Leppard, early Def Leppard fans that just aren't happy. And I don't think you guys are ever gonna be happy if you're always looking for the you know a sound of those first two albums, give or take. And this one here, I have to say, you know, no, it's not hysteria, it's not adrenalize. The sound started changing after that, that, and they started evolving and growing and so forth. 
The album, though, has a pure Def Leppard sound to it. It is different, as every album has had a different sound to it and a different style to it. There's still enough elements here that make it sound like Def Leppard, but it is new and fresh, and I'm really enjoying this album. I wasn't exactly sure. The first three songs didn't really like blow me away kind of thing. They're good songs. I liked them, but they didn't blow me away the way that uh, the stuff did on the 2015 self-titled album. But that being said, the songs haven't worn out their welcome yet either. I am still listening to this thing five, six times a day kind of a thing because it's just that good. Even when I try to move on, all I want to do is go back and listen to this album. So I'm really enjoying it. Maybe you guys will too. Give it some extra listens if it hasn't grown on you yet. And uh, maybe it'll love you know, be a grower and grow on you kind of a thing. So very cool. I have done a full review of this. I'll leave the link in the description in case you're interested in it. Now here's another one. Again, did not expect this one to be as good as it is. Brand new Michael Schenker group album called Universal. Really, really good stuff on this one here. Primary vocalist for this is Ronnie Romero. That guy's everywhere. I mean, at one point he was actually in nine different bands uh, about a year ago, I think, when I was talking about him in terms of the last album that uh, MSG put out called Immortal. I've actually done a full review for that one as well. So you could compare it to this one because I've done a full review for this one now. But uh, there are a few other singers on this. You got Michael Kiske of Halloween doing vocals on one track. You've got Gary John Barton, the original MSG singer, duetting with Ronnie Romero on one song. And then we've got Ralph Sheeper, who's a primal fear and former Gamma Ray vocalist on here as well. So in all, there's 13 tracks on this. This is the bonus uh, track edition. It's got two extra tracks on it. Uh, so 13 tracks total, two of which are not sung by Ronnie Romero. All the rest are sung by Ronnie Romero. So I like this album a lot more because it's far more consistent than the previous album, Immortal, that had a lot of different vocalists, and it just never really found its style, so to speak, because it had so many different vocalists on it kind of a thing. I like those albums as one-off kinds of things, but I kind of feel like Michael Schenker has been doing that on previous albums with Fest and stuff like that, so I was kind of expecting him to go back to the single lead vocalist. For the last album, when he didn't do it, it didn't really connect with me kind of a thing. This album here, can't say enough good stuff about it. I am really, really digging that album, playing that one a lot as well. All right, so uh, another release that came out, uh, one called uh, The Original Recordings by the Sex Pistols, and it's just a greatest hit, so to speak. Um, focus is primarily, obviously, on the one album, uh, never mind the bollocks. Here's the Sex Pistols, as you can see behind me. That's a four CD box set that's right there. Um, this here focuses on that, but they had a lot of outtakes and B-sides and A-sides and things that didn't make the album. And so this thing here compiles up a good mix of that sort of stuff. And you get 20 tracks, I believe, on this one here. So very good. Now, of course, this ties in with the Disney Plus TV show that is sort of a documentation of uh, them coming up, but they've got actors and everything, so it's not a documentary. Um, it's actually got a you know actors and things, regular kind of a series TV show. What's really cool is they've got a lot of other famous historical musical figures in there. Chrissy Hine of the Pretenders is in there. Billy Idol is in there when he was part of Generation X coming up in the scene and so forth. And I'm sure they've got a lot of others. I've just heard about those two yet. And I think that premieres, maybe it's like next Friday um, on June 3rd. Not uh, sure exactly the date, uh, but it is coming up here, tail end of May and or uh, beginning of June there. So if you want to check that out, this essentially is the soundtrack. They've released it to help promote that. Sound on that's really good. I don't know if they've remixed any of those or not, but they just sound really punchy, so I'm enjoying that. All right, so lots of UK things there. Def Leppard, Sex Pistols, and the next one, lead vocalist for Oasis, Liam Gallagher and his brand new album, Come On You Know. So this one here, interesting one. Um, I have to say this one here did not grab me immediately. It's the opening track. It's got uh, sort of choral choir style singing in it when it opens it. It's a very mellow track and then it kind of goes into the rest of the stuff that you'd expect from him. But hasn't immediately grabbed me. This one here is a deluxe edition of it that's got 14 tracks on it. Not sure the tie back to why the whole thing is, looks like a live concert. It is not a live concert, so don't let that uh, confuse you by the album art and stuff like that. It is a studio album, uh, and hopefully in some time that one is gonna grow on me. Now I have to just preference this and say I am was not an Oasis fan when they came out. I came into them many, many years later and sort of grew to love them. So 
If you're a hardcore Oasis fan or Liam Gallagher fan, you're probably gonna love this album. But for me, it's always a little bit of a growing thing for me to get into them. And so I later got into Oasis and really liked them and have found that I really do like the two uh, brothers and their solo works and so forth. So I do follow that stuff as well. Was glad to get this. Now, if you are a huge Liam Gallagher fan, then you probably know about this and are also really excited to have gotten it down the river tame so on the same day that you get a brand new studio album you got a live album and this one here was another one of those live um, or streaming concerts that they did and they do that on a boat going down the river tames playing the video of it is excellent live shows good too it's outdoors so you get a little bit of noise and whatnot but you don't get any crowd or anything like that with it so it's another one of those uh sort of live in a studio meaning uh no live sound from a crowd and whatnot and a lot of those i think we're going to be seeing a lot of those things that happened during the pandemic time the bands will put those out now for the rest of us that didn't watch them and so forth no dvd or blu-ray with this just the audio good stuff though all right and then i got one sort of catalog release or a uh, reissue or whatever you want to call it here but it's a cool one faster pussycat live and rare this was a japanese ep that came out i believe in 1990 and it's got a bunch of live and rare stuff on it and i never picked it up faster pussycat did a box set recently collecting its three major label studio albums and this was added in amongst some other stuff with it I thought about picking it up, but I own all the albums and I prefer my albums in the jewel case and standalone. And then I found out Wounded Bird reissued this. Now it says date on the back is 2021. I've never seen it. I try to keep up on this stuff pretty regularly. It's entirely possible that it just snuck by for me. But um, I feel like this thing might just have that date and have only recently come out. Not entirely sure. But there you go. Faster Pussycat Live and Rare 2021 reissue. So this one here has Bathroom Wall, a remix. Then we've got Poison Ivy and Edit on here. Then we've got three live tracks, Pulling Weeds, Slip of the Tongue, Babylon, and it closes with House of Pain and Edit. So I wish there was some studio outtakes or something. Not on here though, but still good to get nonetheless. And just something that I've known has been out for ages since 1990. Just never picked it up because it didn't really hold anything on it that I was die hard you know, needed to get for the collection. But I am glad to now have it and put it in and finish off my faster pussycat collection at least of their original heyday era and so there you go eight uh, new things that i picked up as part of my music finds for this past week hopefully you enjoyed it uh, certainly leave your comments let me know your thoughts i hope everyone has a great day and i'll talk to you all real soon bye bye everyone